hello welcome to the moving podcast hey what's up here with the boy alton hey hey or also known as palm Palm paradise Paradise. (laughs) um idea behind this moving podcast we were talking about it the other day takes up the trail you think is it that one no uh i don't think it's that one there's multiple different trails We're out at the lowest UN overlook mm-hmm. and we're going up to, I believe it's called Stony Hill, where multiple artists, Jaden Smith, Will Yachty, have filmed some music videos. Bitches low bottle of Perry. I keep them house like a fairy. My hair be real like a fairy. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Alton's got the the photo skills, yeah, the man. photo video yeah, skills. I keep Couldn't going. get the flash on. Yeah. Um, speaking of editing, do you uh, have any particular platforms you use to edit your vocals? Or yeah, yeah. So just... with the music, I use uh, Logic Pro, Logic Pro X. It's like uh, it's like Garage pa- Garage Band on Mac but it's like the more advanced version of it. So I record all my vocals in the Logic Pro and I mix and master everything down in there. So, hmm. yep. Logic Pro. Yep. And is that just like a free application that you can get? No, nah, it's like $300. And then once you Ooh. buy that, then you could like uh, use all the features with it. But my boy Tanner, shout out Tanner Agpoon. Uh, he actually just came over to my crib and I guess he bought it. And once you buy it, you can give it You can give it to other people, like your friends. So he gave it to me. So I got it for free. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I just had to get all my plugins and stuff. Good myself. deal. Good deal. Yeah, it's <laughs> the best deal. Three ninety nine. And you do the edits on your laptop? Yeah. So everything's literally on my MacBook. I don't even have studio speakers. Like all the mixing and stuff on my songs, all in my headphones. Just be locked in. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So you've been out in LA a couple years now. Yeah. And before that you were in New York City. Yeah, Manhattan. And I was wondering if there was anything that um pushed you to go against the grain of maybe what your parents wanted. Yeah. Or society wanted you to do. Yeah, yeah. And come out here and do your own thing. Great question, man, because uh I actually was on that route, so I guess a lot of people probably wouldn't know this, but out of my class, like 700 students, I graduated like number 12 in my class. Like I had like a five point something GPA, like 5.2 or something crazy like that, weighted. Um, I was a smart kid basically. So I, I was able, I had a full ride to like UCF back in Florida and I was trying to go to college route, but I didn't get into a lot of the schools that I wanted. But I ended up getting into the school called FIT, Fashion Institute of Technology in New York. Yeah. So I was like, UCF, FIT, UCF, FIT, because there's only two schools that I got into out of like the seven or eight I applied to. And um, I had, um, no, so I guess I hadn't known to other yet. So I picked FIT, and that summer of 2017, my homie AJ was like, yo, before we go off to school, all of us go our separate ways, why don't we take a trip out to LA? I was like, yeah, I'm down. So <laughs> we saved up the money we were working at the time. And we went out to LA. And like from coming out here, I was 17 at the time. No money, no support for my family. Um, I just loved it. You know, I fell in love with the scene, the culture, like just seeing how everybody was so, so creative and cool and open with being themselves. Like I just fell in love. So that kind of gave me my initial taste. And then when I moved to New York, same thing just like being around all these cool like fashion kids and stuff it just was like amazing to me because it's not like it's not like anything we know from where we're from in florida you know like yeah it just kind of blew my mind so that kind of opened up a world that i I previously didn't know existed and it made me kind of just want to like i guess like you said go against that like go against the grain yeah go against that status quo it's like all right i was taught like you have to go to college and do it this way to like make it per se I was like freaked out. I think another way is possible too. So a living proof that yeah. <laughs> don't have to go that way. Yeah, yeah, you can make things work. You think it's this way or that way? Uh probably this way since it's uphill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Take it easy, thanks.
in the grand So you've got the music, mm -hmm. you've got the Careful. bartending job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you afford to live in LA? <laughs> um, it's a, a mix of a lot of things, man. Like you can ask anybody that's out here trying to do the creative thing. Like it's hard to kind of eat off of just your passion. And this yeah. is something I actually recommend to like up and coming creators. If you see this, like in the beginning, I was like, nah, freak that. I'm not going to have a job. I'm gonna just do my art, and if I starve, that'll make me work harder. That's not the way to do it at all, because you're just gonna starve, and you won't be able to work at all. So, like, yeah. I recommend kind of having, like, a side hustle. Like, you know, like, everybody have a side hustle to kind of, like, make uh, the creating easy, because now since I'm getting some of my money from, like, bartending, real estate, crypto, I got investments in, like, stocks and stuff like that, that allows me to live more comfortably. I can pay my rent every month. I'm living good. I got my own apartment, like one bedroom in LA. Like I got a cat now, I got a whip. That allows me to be in an easier, like a, a better headspace to create versus where as before I was like, nah, freak a job. And I was like doing music and like everything, but I wasn't making no money. So it was like, mm. I was worrying about where I'm gonna lay my head at night and uh, what I'm gonna eat and stuff. It's like, that's not worth it, you know? Like have something, you know, that can like, uh, basically fun what you're trying to do you know now i got a good microphone i got a crazy interface you saw like apollo <laughs> yeah. like that's what some of the top mixing engineers use i have, like the best headphones it's like you know i'm in a good space now you know i got a new macbook it's like you know fine you know like, and god's blessed me too don't get it twisted it's like god's helped me a lot you know it's like my heavenly father he gave me a lot of things as well i feel like i had a lot of breaks but um i had a lot of struggles too so yeah. absolutely definitely helps when you have those necessities covered the food and shelter exactly you gotta handle those first before anything exactly yep. You said when you came out here, you uh, you were just on that music grind, mm -hmm. and you were you uh, didn't know if you were like gonna get your next meal, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, how did you know when you come out when you came out here that you weren't gonna starve? Like, how did you uh, get past that? Yeah. Man? Now to answer that, I didn't know if I wasn't gonna start. I mean, it was uh, it was in the back of my head a lot. Like when I first moved out here, I'll never forget. I had sixty two dollars in my bank account, and um, I was doing like a little econ business. So I kind of had a little bit of foresight of some money coming in, but my idea was like, all right, move out there, get a job, all this stuff. When I came out here, I didn't know I wasn't not going to start. You know, I could have. It was always in my head that like, yeah, this might not work. Well, actually, that wasn't really in my head because literally my my thought process when coming out here was like no matter what happens i'm gonna make it work so it's like okay. even, even if that means like how it was like i, I I'm, not, I'm not gonna have a place to stay or if i'm not gonna have be able to eat every meal it's like freak that i'm gonna make it work no matter what happens so yeah that napoleon hill think and grow rich yeah. mindset yeah, uh, yeah. make it happen but that was no matter way what. before i knew about a napoleon hill you know <laughs> that was just pure pure instinct you know like survival you know yeah, it's like wow. whatever, whatever it takes, you know. You just take that risk, take huh? A, take a risk, you know. Trust God, and take a risk. Yeah. Speaking about people, we see some people coming up. I like what you just said, it was off camera, oh, but well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> em embrace, embrace the fear. Yeah, Embr I was saying, um, you know, like trusting God and take a risk, and you gotta embrace that thing that you fear, you know, like. And then, like, fear itself will kind of, like, recede from you, you know? And it's like, man, it, it can easily get dark, but I'm going to, like, go gentle into it, you know? Like, embrace that fear, embrace that darkness, you know? It's like, you never know what you can make from it. You know? Yeah. And mold it. How's it going? It's kind of like the chaos. It's like, there, there's a big chance that chaos could, you know, be the thing that meets you. But um, there's this saying that, like... Uh, in the beginning of time, in the beginning of the world, it's like, it was just water and God, God basically created the world out of just the water. 
God created the world out of chaos. So it's like same similar thing. It's like the chaos of uncertainty of, okay, I might go hungry. I might not have a place to stay. This music thing might not work. You know, nobody might not listen to me. It's like take all that chaos and like recreate it in your image, you know? Yeah. 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 So you were vegan or vegetarian for... Both. Uh, a couple of years, right? Yes, yeah, so I was vegan for six months and I was vegetarian for a year and a half. So when I first came out here, yeah, that summer I was a vegan. And when I moved back out here, I was a vegetarian. So. What inspired you to try those diets out? Um, Just kind of like, why not? I had a girl back in Florida, she was pescatarian. And I was just kind of thinking about it, freaking lover boy pong okay i was like uh pescatarian that seems cool i think i could probably be a vegan though so i was just yeah. like literally i'm i'm pretty good at it like i just quit all like dairy all dairy all animal products in one day like i was like it sounds like a cool idea let me try it out so and then vegetarianism was like i was a bad vegan i was feeling weak all the time so i switched <laughs> to being a vegetarian and i did that for like a year and a half and the same thing i was a bad vegetarian i was feeling weak I wasn't eating like how I should, so I went back to meat eventually. But I kind of have the mindset, it's like, why not just try something, you know? Like, yeah, like, give it a shot. <laughs> Life's short. Yeah. Take a dip in all the pallets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not really hard for me to leave things behind either, so. Did you, what were the pros and cons of the vegan vegetarian route? Uh -huh. And then what are the pros and cons of the omnivore yeah. route you've found? I feel like a pro of the vegan vegetarian route was like it was cheaper. Um, that was one thing. Like I didn't have to pay for like, you know, when you go out to a restaurant, you get stuff with meat. That's where all the money is. So mm, I think it was a bit That's cheaper. true. But a con was like, I wasn't able to have meat. You know, I kind of missed the taste of chicken and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> a jackfruit doesn't cut it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the I, chickpeas. I, I never was the guy to eat like the vegetarian like fake meat like the vegan fake meat stuff yeah I that type of guy but um that was a pro of it another pro was like um i heard like a lot of people like in silicon valley like freaking um who's that guy mike zuckerberg or mark zuckerberg yeah all those zuckerberg. big guys they'll like wear the same thing every day because it take it takes out that like okay what am i gonna wear tomorrow what am i gonna wear tomorrow it's like i already know what i'm gonna wear tomorrow when i was like a vegan and vegetarian it took out a lot of food options, so okay. kind of, uh, basically freed up RAM space in my brain, I felt like. So it's like, okay, I don't have that many options, so I'm eating basically the same thing every day. So it made it a lot easier, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But um, I would say pro of the omnivore route is like more energy. I feel more like a person, you know? Mm. Again, you can do it like being a vegan vegetarian, but um, from eating like meat and stuff, I feel like it's easier, you know? Yeah. yeah. Con is like we're killing animals. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Hey, is that rock thing up there? Which With the graffiti. It's like a whole platform and... of graffiti and no, stuff. It's not here. Oh, okay, it's probably over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Have you always wanted to do music? No, but I kind of found out, I think, pretty soon that it was like kind of the end all be all because I kind of wanted to like I don't want to say I always wanted to be like famous but I, I just wanted to be heard you know I wanted my voice to be out there so I started with like photography videography stuff like that I was doing fashion like I went to school for it and stuff and um I just kind of quickly realized that to attain the level of uh, notoriety that I wanted to get to music was the avenue to get to it and I also believe that music would open doors for other things too so um I kind of like I kind of, I kind of thought my way to it, and also I, I kind of uh, played with it. I toyed with it even back in PSL. Like there was people there, like Lewis Rich, like Dom, G Rich. I would like record at their studio, just like messing around. So I think it always was kind of in me, but it took a while to kind of like fully um, develop itself. So hmm. yeah, um, so it wasn't always there. My mother is a singer, so maybe it was always kind of there. You know? Yeah, maybe yeah. passed uh, yeah. passed on that inspiration a yeah. little bit. Yeah, yeah. I remember in high school, mm -hmm. you were uh, you were into clothing. Mm -hmm. uh, you had a little clothing brand, yeah. and then um, you had 
you were into photography yeah. and then started getting into the music. Yeah. Uh, were you always creative as a kid? Um, yeah, I think so. Even as a kid, I would actually do these little raps and stuff. Like, I would write them. Um, I would, like, freestyle in middle school and stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I, always, I think I always was pretty creative. You know, I just was, like, a fun kid, you know, like, middle school, elementary school. Yeah. I always wanted to just, like, have a good time and stuff, you know? Like, um, school was kind of hard at times. Like, I was good academically, but the whole constraints of, like, I think the education system wasn't really my thing, per se, but, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think I was partially creative, yeah. 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 I took color outside the lines, so. though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I always see my world in color, that's the thing, you know, I think some people, I think a lot of people actually see the world in black and white, but I always kind of, like, like I said earlier, it's like, I always kind of thought in the back of my head, there's like, a, there's gotta be another way, you know, like, another way to live. Yeah. It's just the status quo of, like. I right, go to school, graduate, get a job, start a family. It's like that never was like appealing to me. If anything, it's more appealing to me now more than ever. But still, it's like I want to like have fun and do my thing. You know, mm -hmm. like, I don't really want to be constrained just yet. Not not saying that like I'm afraid of commitment or anything, but uh, or hard work. But uh, yeah, it's just like another way as possible. Yeah, you gotta take the risks yeah. while you're still young. Exactly, exactly. You take that risk. You know, you jump into. You jump in that water, make sure you can swim, you know? Mm -hmm. Hey. Yep. Wow, we're coming around the bend in the mountain. Yeah. We can just see uh, city, lights city lights down below. Know, yeah. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. We were touching on this a little earlier before the podcast, uh, but on social media, you seem to be a little out of the spotlight not posting like all the time yeah um does whew. careful bro I, I <laughs> where <laughs> this trail is getting treacherous um let me know if this this is blinding you oh, like no, no. just uh I'm good. i can see like a cat okay <laughs> <laughs> um but have you noticed an effect on being on social media less mm -hmm. it, is it having an effect on your um ability to create content um, um yeah so i think for the longest time i was trying to do the whole like uh so i was trying to do the whole like uh consistency on social media without necessarily having like the talent and the um just like my art form where it needs to be so i kind of pulled back from posting on social media and my focus now is like working on myself making sure my mental health is good for a long time i think like from posting on social media for so long kind of kind of got toxic with it like i need to post on tiktok i need to mm -hmm. have this many tiktoks today I need to have these many posts for instagram in a week and it just yeah. got too overwhelming so yeah i did go mia for a minute but i think it's been good for me like you said like uh being able to create i think i'm coming from a place of creation from a pure place because i'm not always seeing what everybody else is doing now it's just like if i think something's cool i'm gonna create it and um and then uh, yeah i don't even really see it as like a thing like to like to put out it's kind of hard to explain i feel like me creating music is like i was telling you a little bit earlier tim like it's like i feel like it's like my direct link between me and god so that's like how we communicate like when i when i create songs it's in such like a pure like euphoric place i almost can't describe it you know yeah and um and now it's like you know i don't make it for people i make it for me and god and then i share it with the world because i want to right now wow but really i could i think i'll probably make music for the rest of my life and there will be a point where i'll just like kind of stop putting it out probably but i just love to do it you know like yeah it feels good so that, that's so key um be, being able to create and just forget about everything yeah. and just do it doing it for yourself yeah. and not for others. because you have to yeah. or for others yeah, yeah. yeah that's, mm. like, that's like what love is you know? yeah I love it. <laughs> yeah, I feel it too.
And that's something else looking down at the city. city. Oh, yeah. Man. I mean, the photo camera doesn't do it justice at all, but Dude. wow. Yeah, the thing it doesn't do it justice. <laughs> How long does it usually take you to complete an album from start to finish? Dang. So <laughs> it can take anywhere from like probably like if I really focused on it, I could probably make an album in like two weeks or something. But I like to let the songs kind of flow to me naturally. So for example, Wonderland, I probably created that in the span of like probably like three, four months. I, I, I made a majority of it in the summer and a couple songs before the summer. But um, yeah, probably like two, three months usually. I like to make sure that like um, the music comes to me naturally. Watch that range. I like to make Thank sure you. the music comes to me naturally and like I'm not trying to force it too much, you know? But I also wanna also stay consistent with like my craft and recording. So I try to listen to the beats like every week. So hmm. yeah, it all kind of depends, you know? Like Wonderland took like three, four months, but this next album, I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I might already be done with it thing about wonderland is i was just making those as songs i wasn't even thinking of it as like oh these are gonna be songs for an album it's like i made a bunch of songs and i realized oh wait these all kind of tell like, the similar the same wow. story so <laughs> it came together kind of naturally and i think it's kind of better that way to like organically have a set of songs that come together versus like oh this is gonna be my album you know yeah yeah And we are talking about earlier that uh, s someone, people DM you beats, yeah. beat packages of about 15 beats. Yeah, yeah. Are, do they ask for money for those? Or? Yeah, so some people will. Like sometimes I have to buy the beat straight out or I can just do this thing called leasing a beat, which would be like a little bit cheaper, like 30 bucks, something like that. Buying a beat is usually like $200. Um, sometimes they'll just kind of give it to me, you know, because we're working together. Like, my homie Lexo, he produced most of Wonderland. He didn't ask for, like, anything, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, people usually, like, um, DM me. They'll be like, yo, like, I want to work with you. Can I um, send you stuff? And I'll be like, yeah. So I'll just give them my beat email. And then they'll like email me like a pack to the to the beat email. And I, when I get to them, I'll get to them right now. My beat emails are super backed up. Watch out right there. Yeah. Got some water. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's cool. You know, it's like I always love when people do that. You know, if you guys are watching this, <laughs> send me some beats. I need them. You know? <laughs> send Palm some beats. Yeah, you know. Bro, look at this, man. This is insane. Bro. I think there's even graffiti all the way down there, it looks like. Yeah, there's rocks down below. <laughs> I guess it looks like a, a Pringle man down, yeah, there. down there. How much do people usually charge for beats, beat packages from what you've found? So people send out beats for free, but it's like if you use it, like if you use a beat, not even if you use the beat, I can make a song somebody's like beat and I don't have to pay anything, but if I put it out there, like if I put it on streaming platforms, then usually you have to pay for the beat. And like okay. at my level, usually like the producers I'm working with, they'll charge like $200 a beat. But if it's like Metro Boomin, you're probably paying like, I don't know, $500,000 or something. Hmm. Yeah. And let's say you choose a beat for your album. Do you have to uh pay the producer of that beat after if your album's doing good and you're making a lot of sales that's usually how it works so like say if i if i put out stuff like right now i'm like huge or anything so i i'm using different people's beats and sometimes they don't even like know about it now that i'm trying to hide it but it's like i'm not making that much of a like a big impact as far as like i'm not getting freaking millions of streams just yet but usually it's like once you start doing really good and making money then you have to pay out the producer so and that's what you know of course i would i love to do that too it's like when i'm making more money then i definitely will like be doing that more but right now it's like i'm not really making too much of anything from the music so it's like it wouldn't really make sense you know mm -hmm. yeah What about California keeps you here and 
keeps you from moving back to Florida. Yeah, so I always tell my folks back home. I heard this thing that um, I heard this thing before on YouTube. This guy was saying that uh, what keeps you inspired is by constantly being in awe every day. And when I'm out here, it's like, man, just look for yourself. You know, we got mountains, <laughs> we got deserts, the ocean. Like just today alone, we've been to how many different terrains and stuff, city, yeah, uh, like Hollywood out here the mountains seeing all these works of art and stuff it's like i'm literally in awe every single day and i think that's what keeps me from leaving you know because i got a love hate relationship with la too it's not like i love the place 100 percent. sometimes that i really hate it but um i don't know i'm used to out here i'm kind of familiar like i know my way around and stuff it's like anywhere i've been here for a while so it kind of feels like home to me you know yeah i think that kind of keeps me from moving back i know i'll go back to florida one day but not until i like retire or something mm. Yeah. Get a nice place down in Hollywood. Just like, I still feel like I'm in LA, you know? <laughs> Keep the snowball rolling out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it melts, move back to Florida. <laughs> yeah, for Make sure you don't take a step back, man. <laughs> right down there. Woo! <laughs> so, a lot of the music you release, um, where can people find that? What platforms? Literally every platform. Um, I still haven't uploaded my last album, Wonderland, to YouTube yet. <laughs> but um, I'm on basically all platforms. YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud. Just look at my name, Palm Paradise. And basically everywhere. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. Even places like Audio Mac. You find me wow. on TikTok, Snapchat. Got me on there. Um, yeah, all platforms, you know. Instagram, even social media, Snapchat, Twitter. Is it an easy process of getting your music onto Apple Music? Yeah, yeah, it's insanely easy. We got like distributors, it's like the main ones, are like TuneCore and DistroKid. I use to, I use uh, DistroKid, and you literally, you just upload the song on there. You tell them like put it on all platforms, do the title, put your cover art on there, and you pay like a yearly fee. I pay like I don't know like twenty bucks a month or something, and they just put it on all platforms for me. I just have to put it myself physically, like manually on like SoundCloud, Audio Mac, YouTube, but they do like Spotify and Apple Music, which is the main one, so. And how do you get paid from Apple Music? So how my distributor puts the songs on there, Apple Music and Spotify pays my distributor and I just get my money from DistroKid. So they have like a part of it where you can just go in and like see how much money you've made and they pay me every month. So it's pretty hmm. cool. It's like. It's like a it's like a form of residual residual income which like it feels good before i was trying to survive off of it but now it kind of feels weird because like again it's like it, this is such an intimate thing that i have music i really feel like it's my connection between me and god so the fact that people like uh i guess like inadvertently pay me is like mind-blowing you know but it's cool you know same thing like if i had a label it'd be the same thing so i'd give the music to my label and they would put it on the platforms and then the platforms would pay my label and they would pay me but i'm independent so hmm. i got a handle business side myself too you know publishing all that stuff yeah it seems like everyone's uh getting on the streaming now with uh apple music yeah, everybody, spotify everybody. so they've got these uh subscriptions to them mm -hmm. and if someone downloads it and they have they're subscribed to let's say apple music spotify is that still money going to your distributor yeah literally, whatever they do that they download it if they buy it if they stream it it's like uh like whatever they do even some something i think like even like tiktok and stuff uh, pays out now a little bit wow. it, it's not that much from any of them you have to be like really big to make a good amount of money from it mm -hmm. but whenever anybody streams your song like you make a little bit of money you know it's like uh i don't know it's like a like a third of a cent or something i heard though per stream so depending wow. on the platform different platforms pay different like apple music pays the most i believe and spotify actually pays kind of some of the less but um yeah they're always getting it go listen to the music yeah come guys. on man come on. Fill, fill my pockets <laughs> okay okay <laughs> Are you on any dating apps in LA? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one, Tim. Ah, hey, I'll never tell. No. <laughs> okay, okay. I've tried data app, dating apps in the past. Like I've tried all of them. I've tried like um, Hinge, Tinder, Bumble. I've mm. tried like Christian dating apps. Even. Okay. You know, I'm looking for my, you know, for everything. <laughs> but um, they just don't work for me. You know, like 
Um, I feel like I find that a lot of the people that I meet on dating apps aren't really what I'm looking for. I feel like a lot of the people that I meet on dating apps are like, I don't want to categorize anybody, but they're kind of like, I don't want to say weird, but just the encounters have never really been that like, that uh, uh, good for me per se. And also like, I never really like find that many people on there either. Like matching is like, it takes a lot of work, you know, you gotta, yeah. you gotta put your profile together. You gotta put your <laughs> photos on there. Yeah. I don't really, I, you know, I don't really hop in front of the camera too much. This is an exclusive for my homie, but uh, yeah. So currently, no, I'm not, but I have been in the past. Like, I've gotten dates before. Um, just finished a little thing that Shuddy from uh, I'm in on Hinge, but wow. yeah, currently, no. Do you have any tips on bringing dates to fruition on those apps? <laughs> uh like what Ma making them uh, making them happen uh getting a date on the app. on the apps yeah oh, that's the thing i never mastered the apps you know like i've yeah. had things come from apps but i'm not like the i'm not the boss at that you know yeah. like i'm sure like i think the thing is just like be attractive you know? <laughs> like, if you're attractive you probably i think it's easier like if you just kind of like have the looks but um mm -hmm. no matter what happens you know even if you don't get matched that much you know like if you get matched with some people give it a shot you know be yourself i know it's like kind of cliche but um I, I remember when i was on the apps and stuff like i'm really like trying to be like locked in with my faith nowadays so i kind of like not ask them outright, outrightly like if they were like Christians or anything, but I'll kind of throw out hints of like, oh yeah, well, like I pray and I go to church and stuff. I'm like, sometimes I, I can tell that would like scare some shorties away, but for the ones that were like me, that kind of brought them closer in a way. So it's like, just be who you are, you know, what you believe in, like whatever it may be, like let, let that shine through and I think um, it'll return, it'll, it'll yield a return. So. This was a question I just thought of but um I was wondering where you got the how you came up with the name Palm Paradise yeah yeah <laughs> so uh so you remember me and Jay had that brand called a Fool's Paradise yeah um I'll tell you about the palm first so back in Florida I was trying to let my hair grow out and I remember a couple times like one time it was at work and this girl was just trying to make fun of my hair or something. She was like, yeah, palm tree head. And I was like, huh, palm, I kind of like that name. Um, and a couple people like said something like palm about my hair. So that was one thing. And then also coming up in Florida, like just my infatuation with palm trees is like insane. It's like, I can't really, um, I, don't know, I, don't I can't really be in a place where there aren't palm trees. Like I can't be in a place, like a state that doesn't have them or there's like a bunch of oak trees. Like I just feel out of place. So that's where I got the first name Palm from. It's like my hair and an ode to like where I come from. And Paradise came from like that brand that me and my friend AJ had. Um, it was called a Fool's Paradise. So I just took Palm and I took Paradise and I put it together. So we also had this thing called like Paradise Collective. So it was like all of us kind of had like Paradise as our last name because we were kind of we were kind of going after the whole like uh, like I was ASAP Rocky, ASAP Fur. Okay. Everybody had ASAP in their name. <laughs> so instead of it being the first name for us, we wanted to be our last name. So it was like Palm Paradise. Gio uh, used to kind of be like G Paradise. Wow. AJ was like Jace Paradise. So <laughs> kind of was like our own little spin on things. So I'm stuck with it. I don't know. Sometimes I think about dropping the Paradise and just going by Palm. But um, I'm trying to do new things in the future. Like start like a, I want to start like a two man um, type like band thing. Like uh, and then with that, I think I'm gonna start going by the name Cheshire instead. So. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you posted the um, Cheshire cat. cat. That's, that's your profile. profile yeah. So, yeah, and then um, yeah, it's also like the whole theme for Wonderland. So it's kind of like a little okay. sneak transition into that, you know. Huh. So now my next move. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're about to wrap up the interview, but got one more question. All right. If you could recommend one book to a young palm, mm. what would that be? One book, The Power of Now by Edgar Tolle. That's like my favorite book. I've probably read it like four times through now. It just uh, talks to you and like em emphasizes the importance of being in the present moment. Because I feel like in my life, I've experienced so much at this age already. But a lot of a lot of things when I was experiencing them, I wasn't really in the moment. I was always looking like ahead, like, oh, what I could be this, or I wish I was doing this instead, or I was looking back to the past, like at things that I've done that I wasn't really like the most proud of, or things that I could have done differently in my life. And um, 
you never really like learn to enjoy life un until like you're living in this present moment seeing it as your only moment you know so that book is like life changing on that it literally will like change your mindset on like being present in the moment right now so that's a book that i recommend to a young pong young out there <laughs> and to anybody else that like you know trying to read that you know yeah i remember my first time reading that the eckhart tolle and it, it's a trip yeah <laughs> yeah reading it. yeah that's a good one man. but hey appreciate you man hey, appreciate you man good being on yeah appreciate you for having me man. Yeah. yeah thank you much love guys hey hey see you next time hey. Keep creating. So I've been that laundry place over there. I used to go there. The little lady there used to tailor my clothes and stuff. She's so sweet. This is the biggest guitar center in the world right here.